Welcome, welcome to Homekeeper. So glad to be here. And I'm very excited because I've got the same guest for today and then the next two programs. Let me tell you about her. Her name is uh, Heidi Janssen, and she's a mom. And she discovered something in the homework that her 10-year-old son brought home, and it created a lot of questions and led her to something called Common Core. And I've been wanting to do some programs on this for quite a while, and I believe that I was led to the right guest to talk about our public school system. Because when we started the Homekeepers program, um, you know, my number one goal is that Jesus is alive and well in the home and in the relationships. And beyond that, I wanted to cover every kind of situation that can affect the home. And that's endless. And I think that close to the top of that list would be the education of our children. And I'd like to say up front, this is not to paint a broad brush on all public schools. I know there are some fine ones, but I want to warn you about something that's coming from the federal government, which disturbs me very, very much because I don't trust the federal government. I don't think they've done a whole lot of things right recently and not sure that the tentacles of that should reach into our community schools. And so um, I just want you to be ready to listen to these programs and uh, be informed. It's uh, very, very important. And uh, you will see an interview that I did with uh, Heidi Janssen, and you'll discover that she really has done her homework very, very well. I'm going to join Stephanie, and we're going to fix a tomato, zucchini, pasta, uh, salad and with pesto. That's what drew me to, is that pesto. So we'll fix that for you. But before I join her, let me remind you of the importance of these kind of programs and that we are viewer supported. Uh, we need your help, friends. So uh, maybe you've watched a long time and you've intended to help us out and never have. And uh, so let this be the day. If you use your credit card, 1-800-229-0059, or write to me at Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And uh, boy, will we appreciate it so much. Thank you, and God bless you for that. And I'm over here with uh, Sister Stephanie, yes. and I finally <laughs> got around to liking your page. Thank you. I'm up to 201. Uh -huh. 201 likes, and people are um, messaging me, and we're talking back and forth. So I Stephanie's love that. fan club right there, Facebook. Dot com yeah, slash and, Stephanie's fan club. you know, some people, like Taylor Swift and people, I think they have a million or so, but I'm working you're slowly, on your way. You know, just slow and slow, steady progress. You're on your <laughs> way. Well, okay, we, so. Yeah, we've come up with another. Uh, there's no end to what you can do with just your basic pasta. You know, I'm learning more and more just to keep things simple. Mm -hmm. Just keep it simple, mm -hmm. you know, and it's still tasty. Right. It's still yummy. This is a healthy recipe. Mm -hmm. So, we have zucchini that we... Grated. Yeah, you grate that and you don't go right to the center core where it's kind of mushy. Right, you just do the outside, grate the outside. Do you know one of my fondest memories? Michael was uh, four years old and he went to a four-year-old kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And um, shopping for his clothes. I, I, I thought he was the best dressed kid and he, he went in there and just... And that's your best memory? It's one of my very best. Do you know one of my worst memories? Is when you went to school with my daughter, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a teenager. So now, you know what I do? I give her cash and I go here. Go get full clothes. <laughs> yeah, she's that age. And I have um, tomatoes, a pint of mm -hmm. cherry tomatoes mm -hmm. here that we have. And I have two tablespoons of oil that we're going to put in here. And two tablespoons of uh, pesto. Oh, yes. This is oh, really look at that. That is just delicious. delicious. Just we have gorgeous. And you're chopping basil. Yeah. Yes. And we lay this on the top. When yes. It's this is salt and pepper. Just a few little ribbons of fresh basil. Mm -hmm. And didn't the Lord put a nice aroma oh. on basil? Yes. And then yeah. we're gonna mix this up. Now the me the recipe calls for mozzarella balls, mm -hmm. which you could not find, mm -hmm. so we're using mozzarella. But be mozzarella. Mm -hmm. But before I do that, I have linguine here that we've cooked up mm -hmm. and I have some more pesto here that we're going to put in here. Let me get this going. I don't know who put the whole pesto thing together, but we love them. But it was great. 
And you were saying that you, um, before you had kids, you were pastoring and a part of your congregation was Italian? Uh, one third of the congregation was yes. Italian and I'm telling you when they invited us over, That's it was goodies. an event. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I didn't know, I'm a girl from Colorado and, and uh, when we ate, Spaghetti was the meal, that yes, was it. Yes. But in a good Italian home, that is the appetizer Ooh. and the bowls are that big. <laughs> and then after that, they bring on the turkey and the dressing and the lemon pie. And I was, I was expecting Michael, so I had a, I just had a appetite like a horse. Yes. So. Well, you're pregnant, you're eating for two. Wonderful. Although my doctor, when I was pregnant, I said, hey, I'm eating for two. And he said, well, one of you is just this big. So. <laughs> okay, right. so I'm going to put the mozzarella in here real Ooh, quick. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, this is so delicious. There we go. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, I realize we've done some other pasta salads, but the thing that can get really attractive is... It's the combinations that and people the use. Oh, it mm -hmm. smells so delicious. And that there you we go. know it's going to be good, but better if it hang. Oh would yeah, hang this together could hang, a little bit. especially if it had the fresh mozzarella balls, and you just oh put that in the refrigerator and let mm -hmm. it all marry together. Did you put the bit? Yeah, you did. Mm hmm. Would you put the camera on Stephanie, please? Yeah. <laughs> Take a big bite. Mm. <laughs> We're learning. Take dainty I bites. I wonder why I don't buy the pesto more often. I need to. Mm -hmm. It's hard to eat fettuccine daintily. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. That's another thing when you go to an Italian home. They have a great big bib for you. Mm -hmm. I uh, see why. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is delicious. You want this recipe? Yes. And um, if you do want it, that information is coming up on your screen. We'll be glad to get it out to you. There's no charge. Uh, most people nowadays are emailing them their request, which is just fine. And uh, stay with us. I want you to meet uh, Heidi Janssen and learn what she has to say. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Well, I'm uh, very happy to welcome to Home Keepers. Heidi Marvin Johansson, did I pronounce that correctly? Johansson. Johansson, all right. Uh, Swedish, right? Yeah, yeah. that's your, your husband. You kind of look Swedish though, actually. German, I speak German, yeah, my mom's German. All right, well, I'm so glad to have you. And I have been interested in this subject and looking for someone uh, who really can tell us about it and get into the nuts and bolts. Uh, as I dig into it, my personal opinion is much worse than I thought. And we want to alert our viewers as we talk about something called Common Core, which is going to and is revolutionizing our whole educational system in the United States of America. But let's get back to uh, your very beginning. Uh, why did you get interested in this? Well, you know, um, I actually started having children much later in life than most people do. Um, I have a master's degree and and my son is now 10 years old and so when he he just started finished fourth grade so at the beginning of the school year he came home with math homework and he has always been super sharp in his math homework so when he sat there and he was staring at his homework I said Titus what's wrong why are you having a difficult time with your homework and he said, it's strategies. And I said, what do you mean strategies? Just do the problems. Here, let me show you how I learned how to do multiplication. No, I can't look at that. No, we're, that's not, we're, we're, we're not supposed to look at how you did it. We're supposed to learn the strategies. And I said, okay, I'm not equipped. What are they teaching you in school? That was my first question. What are you being taught in school? So then I went to the teachers and, I, and the principal and I said, what 
are you teaching my child? And it seems simultaneously, <laughs> we got a letter from the school district, from the uh, Department of Teaching and Learning, and they said, be prepared that your children's grades are going to reflect a little lower th than this time last year because of the more rigorous standards that we are implementing called the CCSS, the Common Core State Standards. And I said, what are the Common Core State Standards? And that's really what started it all for me. You know why I love this? Because uh, you didn't come from, I mean, you're very smart, I know that, but you didn't come from some uh, corporate entity that thought all this up. Uh, you're a mom and you, you smelled a rat, basically. And uh, there are other moms like you who are involved in this. And so where I came in, uh, I saw on Facebook, boy, do I get a lot out of Facebook, get a lot of recipes for one thing, uh, where uh, Highest Praise Church, pastored by Ken and uh, Susan Pippen, very fine church in Tarpon Springs. Har Tarpon Springs. And um, they very wisely said, we're going to have a night for you to come and learn about Common Core. I, I, I just take my hat off to churches like that. And I might say that Heidi is very capable uh, because she has now studied this and is very, very well informed um, that you might go to another church to talk about it. Uh, so we're um, just want to throw that out there for you. So I contacted Susan and she told me about you and I went online and listened uh, to the way you addressed the church that night. And I think this is the way our steps are ordered by the Lord. Mm -hmm. You got interested with your child and your pastor steps in and then I hear it and you come and now thousands Here and thousands are. of people are gonna yeah. see this. Uh, I have seen some of the math problems and you might as well talk to me in Swahili. Mm -hmm. They are nothing like two and two equals four. No, my issues were that there were no parent resources. And I do remember when Titus was in kindergarten and there were some strange things about the math and I said, where we, the, the vocabulary is different. What is an array? What is an area model? Why are you using sticks? Why are the kids counting on their fingers and toes? Why do they keep having to do these big broad pictures, solving problems in 108 steps when they could do it in three or four or five or maybe even 10? You know, uh, I'm of the mind that a confused mind does nothing. So if you are confusing the children with five or six strategies, and then they assured us that if the child came to a test point, that if they chose to use a particular strategy, that the answer would, and it was correct, that they would get credit for that answer. Well, it turns out that the children were expected to use the teacher's strategy. So now not only are they supposed to use the different various strategies, but then they were also to read the teacher's mind and determine what strategy she wanted them to use. And, and then they begin to just block you out. Yeah. No answers. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Can you just give maybe your own definition of what is Common Core? More and more, and more people are hearing about it. Okay. Well, how I've, would you define it? I will tell you that it is um, a nationally implemented standard that 48 states had agreed to to adopt. Uh, so I can start from the beginning. Obviously, you can see I have a notebook here because I <laughs> don't has believe a anything satchel. else. I do have a satchel. She has a satchel. She wouldn't let me carry. She said it'd be too heavy for it me. It is too heavy. <laughs> it absolutely is too heavy. And so uh, what we kept hearing from the districts and the language that was used came down from the, the federal government, basically. The fed, federal government will tell you that they are not the originators of the Common Core State Standards. Which is a lie. Isn't it? it is because the uh, the where it really came from is the CCSSO, which is the Council of Chief State School Officers and the National Gover Governors Association. Both of those are tremendously large lobbying groups in uh, in D.C., but they also represent a certain uh, group of people. The NGA, the National Governors Association, supposedly is an organization of all of the governors in the United States and the uh, Council of Chief State School Officers is supposedly an organization that is, uh, com comprises all of the Board of Education chairman uh, commissioners in every state. They're all unelected, right? They are. 
except for the governors, they are elected, but, uh, but those, the commissioners of education are unelected, as are the board, uh, boards of education in each state. And so they decided to take on uh, the, uh, the, the Common Core State Standards, and I can tell you who the originator is. But go ahead, you were gonna ask me something. Uh, give us the originator. I think I know his name. <laughs> <laughs> so we have all heard of the College Board. Yes. Which is uh, chooses all the curriculum, right? Well, they have to, they are in charge of uh, college entrance exams, the SAT. Mm -hmm. So David Coleman is mm -hmm. the president of the uh, the College Board currently. And so my belief, personally, in doing my research, because I've watched numerous videos that he, uh, where he was interviewed or he'd done presentations, and he said, when I was in the process of convincing the governors to adopt these standards, he had already been in the process, I believe, <laughs> in my mind, uh, that because he was creating an exam that was to test all of the, the high school grads in the United States, that every single state had a different set of standards. And some of them were very long, like I've heard from teachers, their standards were this deep. Like they literally had to study all of this, and this is what the kids had to do by the end of the school year. And then some states might have been a smaller, but their, their standards were different. Mm -hmm. And so when David Coleman in the college board, he had to take all of the standards from every single state and determine how the SAT was to be shaped. So this is all speculation on my part. So he probably thought it would be so much easier if all the states had the same standards. So you have cookie cutter kids. Well also, I believe at its inception as the word began to get out, uh, he said, or the, the story was, this, these are states, these are run by the states, but that's a lie. It's from the federal government. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's important. Uh, to know that. It absolutely is. Sandra Stotsky, uh, love her. This woman has given so much of her time and energy to, to combating these standards. She was on the original validation committee. She was uh, is instrumental in a lot of the standards in the in the state of Massachusetts. I mean, she's amazing. And I had the, the opportunity to email with her early on and she said that the uh, the English language arts group because this uh, this time the standards only affect math and English math and English language arts but social studies and science is coming so they're planning well, what about history I've heard they just oh they're lumping fillet history well they're lumping that in with English language arts and social studies. Oh, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> oh it does because see as you're reading then the material that you're reading is is history mm -hmm. But then, yes, there have been a lot of adjustments to the historical books that they, or even um, how they're writing the curriculum. That there's certain things that are omitted, mm -hmm. certain points and in we history. And we will get into that. Yeah, so that's interesting. But Sandra Stotsky said, uh, because there was a work group that that had to draft these standards. I was like, who are these people? That was my original question to the to our school board. Do you know who the authors are of the of these Common Core State Standards? What everybody needs to know is there are two pieces of legislation. One is called No Child Left Behind, mm -hmm. and the second is Race to the Top. Mm -hmm. No Child Left Behind was given to us by President Bush. Mm -hmm. It really started it all. I believe the intention was, um, was probably good, as in probably Race to the Top as well, but what it did is it locked states into legislation that was going to hamstring them. Well, also, um, in everything you follow the money. Mm -hmm. And so there are states really wanting to opt out or not use it, but the federal government the carrot is puts there. this carrot in front of them of uh, millions and millions of dollars, mm -hmm. and so um, they, are, they are just sucked into it. Yeah. I do think it's important for people to know what No Child Left Behind is uh, and what it stated. The No Child Left Behind Act authorizes several federal education programs that are administered by the states. The law is a realization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Under the 2002 law, states are required to test students in reading and math in grades three through eight and once in high school. What this did, though, 
It sounds it, pretty innocent. It does sound innocent, but it's, it's trying to establish accountability to ensure those students who are at disadvantage to achieve academic proficiency. Uh, flexibility allows school districts flexibility in how they use federal education funds to improve student achievement, research-based education, and parent options. We hardly ever see anything directed at the parents. This snuck, oh, that's true. This snuck in the back door. <laughs> My biggest question was, I don't remember voting on this. Do you remember voting on this? Shouldn't th this be on a referendum? This is huge. Well, my personal opinion is get rid of the Department of Education. That's, that's how uh, radical I could be on the subject because I believe that that education should be in the hands of the community, the town, the city, and uh, maybe some state input. Uh, the head of the Department of Education's name is Arne Duncan, right? Yes. Okay, I watched... I watched a video with him being interviewed where this is his goal. School, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And he said, you know, the YMCA can mm -hmm. come in and the big brothers and sisters. Nothing about home or parents that they want the children in this, in this environment, 10, uh, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes. That's where they want to go. Yeah, he wants the school to be the center of the community. The but if you look at his background, his background in education is in Chicago. It was all urban. One of the remarks that he made that was so offensive, he said in an interview, is that, oh, the reason um, that everybody's up in arms about this is that your suburban white housewife is now distraught that her child really isn't as brilliant as she thought they were. Mm -hmm. And so it was a direct slam to those of us who are not in an urban society, who are not in a minority group, but we are fighting for the minorities right now mm -hmm. because the Common Core State Standards, I, I describe them as a Christmas tree, and some people may beg to, beg to differ, but if you look at it like this, when they talk about what rigorous is, what do you think about when you think about rigor? more difficult, challenging. Yeah, working hard. Right. Well, our superintendent of school sat in a meeting with me and said, school's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be hard. And I said, I agree. I think it should be challenging, but it should be attainable. Mm -hmm. So my number one question to them was, and it has been from the beginning as well, is are these standards for the younger grades, are they developmentally and cognitively age appropriate? Because mm -hmm. when you read some of these math sentences, they're expecting kindergartners, first of all, to come in and to be able to read and to reason like an adult. Mm -hmm. And they ask them to, in, can you please, in complete sentences mm -hmm. with a capital and a period at the end, give me an argument or describe to me why you like blue over red? And the child goes, because blue, it's pretty. Can you tell me why you like it? This is for a kindergarten. Yes. Yes, they're expecting them to reason, to they, think critically. They use the term a lot, um, uh, finding solutions, to a kindergartner who doesn't probably have a whole lot of problems, you know, certainly in his mind. Well, what background do they have? I said, that's like expecting a toddler to run a marathon. Their muscles are not developed. Every single early childhood development specialist, psychologist, child psychologist, you name it, across the nation, across the world will tell you that you are expecting a young child to reason beyond what their brain is developed. Well, on, on, the, next, uh, on the next program, because uh, Heidi's going to be with me on the next program as we uh, try to, uh, you know, get into the weeds a little bit more on Common Core, but I just wanted to acquaint you with it and um, don't get lost because uh, the details are unending and every, every time you pull back a layer there's something in my mind even more ridiculous. But the sad thing is uh, the, the children, the children are going to pay the price and the nation and the nation. Of course God's nowhere, absolutely nowhere in this uh, is the common core situation. So. Uh, be sure you're with me next time. I hope you got that website. We kept it up. And be sure you're with me on the next program as we continue on uh, with the discussion and hope, hopefully to introduce you if you didn't know about it and educate you somewhat about Common Core and be on your guard. Stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye.
Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. At the top of the show, I uh, reminded you that we are viewer supported, and I would like to elaborate on that a little bit because if there's one specific remark we get about the program, it's the very excellent guests that come our way. We've never paid a guest, and all I can say is that God sends them to us <clears throat> because television is very, very, very expensive. Uh, just you know, as uh, simple as we can make it. So that address is on your screen. I have always thought there's a lot out there that you felt maybe the Lord impressed you to uh, send a financial gift. Let it be today as we approach this subject. I'm very, very thrilled that um, God crossed my path <clears throat> with uh, Heidi because we're talking about the most precious gift a human being ever gets in this world and that's a child and God really designed very very specifically that they grow and learn he wants them to be smart and that they are to be guided by the parents and as I see this plan that's being programmed from Washington DC although you'll find it under a lot of different names and that's why um, it's important to do some of your own homework, but it almost rules out the parents, everything I've seen about it. <clears throat> and so as we get into it more in the next couple of days, uh, it'd probably be a good idea if you had a pencil and paper handy and uh, could take some notes because I can see the very, very clearly that parents are gonna have to be more and more and more involved and all I can say is do not miss the next program. Um, it's vitally important. And the Bible says that good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. And it says get wisdom. Uh, that's what we're trying, to, trying very hard to give you, my friend. So don't miss it next time. But until then, remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.